Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I've got a great problem involving three blocks. All right, here's the setup of the problem. Now I've got these three blocks, I've given you their masses, and I'm telling you I'm applying a force of 18 newtons, but I'm only applying that force on the M1 block, as you see illustrated in the figure here. Now, there is friction in the problem. There's gonna be friction between blocks M2 and M3, so between both of those, or right at that interface here. There is no friction down over here between M1, M2, and the floor. Imagine it's sliding on a sheet of ice. All right, so as I push those blocks, they're going to accelerate together, and they're gonna to accelerate to the right. All right, I've got two questions here for you. What is the magnitude of the friction force acting between M2 and M3? All right, that's a nice uh, problem. The other one is, what is the contact force between M1 and M2? Those blocks are kind of pushing against each other. Uh, what is the magnitude of this contact force between the two blocks? So what I really like about this problem, uh, there's a lot of different objects. There's a lot of forces on the free body diagram, okay? So let's go ahead and set that problem up and I'll show you how to solve this problem. All right, remember, if you like my video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, if you like what I do, do it. <laughs> right, before drawing the free body diagrams, let's see this actual experiment at work right here. Yeah. Uh, so I got my son Andy here. Have a look at him pushing <laughs> three blocks. All right, so we're gonna start with our free body diagrams. I've got the three blocks right here. So we're gonna start with the easy forces. One easy force is the weight. All right, so the weight has a different magnitude on each block because the mass is different. Okay, but for each one of those, the earth is pulling down on it, so we have to have a weight. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, what else? Uh, another obvious one is this 18 newtons, right? Uh, 18 newtons is pushing on block M1, so I should have a force over here on block M1. Now, some people draw it like this. Um, I prefer just to have the start of the arrow at the block. And then again, they're vectors. I can move them around all I want. So this here is my 18 Newton applied pushing force. All right, now the key to this problem here is this force of 18 Newtons, you should not put that on these other blocks because it's not really being applied to those other blocks. It's someone here that's just pushing this block. Okay? They're not touching the other ones. Now, there are going to be contact forces between those blocks, but it's certainly not this applied force. Okay, so the 18 newtons should only apply to the block M1. All right, what else do we have? Well, we do have normal forces, right? So normal forces, um, these are also called contact forces because they are a result of two surfaces in contact. So let's start with this one, right? This is the bottom of the block M1 that's in contact with the table. So I'm going to say that the table is pushing up on that block with a normal force. We'll call it N1. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we also have um, block M2 is touching the table. So the table is pushing up on the block. So I'm going to call this one N2. All right, what about block M3? Well, M3 is certainly not touching the table. The table is kind of down here, right? But M3 is in contact where? It's in contact right here, right? There is a contact between both of those. So that means that the block M2 is pushing up on the mass M3, okay? So we have to give this a name. Uh, for this one here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this, let's just call it another normal force. I'll call this one N3. Okay. Now, N3, it's very, very important that we understand where this comes from. This is block uh, M2 pushing up on M3. Okay. Now, one thing you have to remember right here, which is super important, is Newton's third law. Right. So Newton's kind of third law tells us what? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So... For this problem, it means if block M2 is pushing up on block M3, there must be a force that's equal and opposite. So it must be N3, right? Because it's equal and opposite. And it must be on a different object, okay? So if M2 is pushing up on M3, M3 is pushing down 
on M2. So you have to have these. Okay? These are action-reaction pairs. All right, what else do we have? Let's make some room here. We're not quite done. There is one more surface that we didn't consider yet, right? It's this one right here. The interface here between M1 and M2. So we have to think about these forces. Let's try to draw a force acting on M2. So we have the block M1 here that's going to be pushing M2. Okay? It's going to be a force in this direction. Now I can give this a name like a normal force. Again, I'm just going to use the word contact here. And I'm going to say this force here, I'm just going to call it C for a contact force. But this is really M1 pushing on M2. Okay? Again, Newton's third law tells me what? Newton's third law should tell me that there must be an equal and opposite force to this one. The equal and opposite force must be the same contact force, same magnitude rather, opposite direction and on a different object. Okay? Now, are we done with our free body diagrams? Well, okay, let's go back and read the problem. Now, we do have a horizontal frictionless surface. So that's the surface down here where M1 is on M2. Okay? Um, so that one, there's no frictional force that we need to add over there. But what about the friction here between M3 and M2? Okay. How do we add friction force to the block M3? How do you think you would do that? It's not that obvious. Okay. Uh, for this problem over here, uh, the friction force has to be in this direction here. If you think about it for just a minute, okay, we know that all the three blocks accelerate together, right? And I need a force that is pointing to the right. Otherwise, M3 is not going to accelerate, okay? So there really has to be a push force, which is a result of the force of friction here that is pushing M3. And that's the only thing that can really be pushing M3. Now, Newton's third law tells me that if there's a friction force, acting on M3 pointing to the right. Again, this is a result of friction between the two surfaces. There must be an equal and opposite force acting on the other object, right? These are also action-reaction pairs, okay? Now, you gotta think about this for a little bit, okay? So this is what the free body diagrams look like for the three blocks. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to write down Newton's second law for all the blocks because we are told that the blocks accelerate together to the right and they all have the same acceleration. So that's going to simplify Newton's second law for us. Let's go ahead now and write down Newton's second law for the three blocks. Okay, for the block M1, I'm going to be interested here in the sum of the forces in this horizontal direction. So I'm really going to use a coordinate system here where this is positive x. I can call this positive y up here. Okay, so let's look at all the forces in this direction because that is the direction of the acceleration. So what do we have? We're going to have positive f. Okay, that's our applied force of 18 newtons. Minus this contact force uh, has to be equal to, well, in this case, it's m1 multiplied by the acceleration. Okay. And again, they all accelerate together, which means I only need one value of A. So the acceleration of block one, acceleration of block two, and the acceleration of block three are all the same value, and they're all equal to A. All right, what about uh, M2? Uh, for block M2, again, we're going to look at all the forces in the horizontal direction, in the X direction. So for this one, look what we have. We have C, and I have positive C because C is pointing to the right. That's our contact force. Minus... Uh, our force of static friction, force of friction, and that there must be equal to M2 multiplied by its acceleration, which is A. And then the last one for block M3, M3 is simple, right? There's only one force and it's pointing to the right. That's what's making it accelerate. That's our force of friction, okay? static friction, because there's no sliding between the two blocks. This is M3 multiplied by A. Okay, that's it. These are the three equations for Newton's second law. I could also write down equations for uh, the forces in the vertical direction. However, in this case here, I have everything I need. Uh, the first one is the force of friction. They want me to solve for this guy. 
Uh, the second one is the contact force, so they want me to solve for the letter C right here. All right, so let's go see now how we can solve for uh, both of these questions right here. All right, so our first problem is let's find the friction force. Well, let's look at our equations. Uh, equation one doesn't have friction force. Forget about it. Equation two. Equation two has friction force. However, we don't know acceleration and we also don't know the contact force. So we're kind of stuck. I think the simplest one to use is maybe equation three right here, right? So we know right away that the friction force uh, is simply equal to the mass M3 multiplied by acceleration. But we need to know what the acceleration is. <laughs> so we're still kind of stuck. So I'm gonna teach you a little trick right here. How can we find the acceleration of the three blocks? Now the key is that they move together, okay? And one way to do it is to combine the three equations. I'll show you how to do that right now, okay? One thing I can do here is you notice that the contact force in one equation it's negative, in the other one it's positive. Um, look at the friction force. In one case it's negative, in the other one it's positive. And these are action-reaction pairs, that's why. One way to eliminate all these forces here is simply to add up the three equations. So if I add up all the three equations, look what I get. I get F, there's only one F over here. Here I'm gonna get minus C plus C, so I, get, I don't have C. And here I'm gonna get minus F plus F. So that, those will cancel out. And that equals two, now here I gotta add everything together. M1A plus M2A plus M3A. Ah, this is a really, really nice equation because look at you can factor out the acceleration because it's the same for all three blocks. Uh, F. So at the end of the day, my acceleration is simply going to be F over the total mass of the system, which is simply adding up the individual masses. Ah, well, I can get a number for this, right? This is 18 newtons. That was my applied force. And the masses I've given you up here, simply 1 uh, plus 2 uh, plus 3, uh, that's 18 over 6. That means my acceleration is 3 meters uh, per second squared. All right, that's great. I can now go back and solve for my force of friction. Now my force of friction is simply M3 multiplied by this acceleration that I just solved for. Okay, uh, M3 was three kilograms multiplied by three. Uh, that means that my force of friction for this problem is nine newtons. All right, awesome. One little comment I want to make here is hopefully you didn't try to solve for the force of friction using something like this, right? Coefficient of static friction times the normal. In this case, it would be the normal three, right? So you might have done something like this, uh, M3G. Uh, this here was 0 0.51. This here was three kilograms. And little g is 9.8. Well, if you substitute in all the numbers in the calculator, let me go ahead and do that. Uh, 0 0.51 times 3 times 9.8, lo and behold, you get like basically 15 newtons. All right, so if you did that, unfortunately, you would be wrong, okay? And let me explain this for a minute. Actually, this is not the equation for the force of static friction. You have to be very, very careful with static friction. The equation is actually an inequality. It just means that um, the force of static friction is always less than or equal to this value. But that just means that the maximum, another way of writing this formula is for the maximum value. The maximum value of the force of static friction between this block and on top of this other one is given by this equation, which is 15 newtons. I agree with you that it's 15, but this is really the maximum force. Actually, what we found is the actual force of static friction for this problem, and you know that it's less than 15 newtons, okay? So be a little bit careful with static friction right? Um, you can really only write an equation for static friction for the maximum value the way I did over here, okay? In general, it's always less than or equal to that value. All right, uh, let's go now and go back and try to find what this contact force is using uh, our equations. All right, now in this next problem, what we want to do is we want to find what is the contact force. The contact force appears in two free body diagrams. It appears in two equations. Guess what? We can use any equation we want in order to find what the contact force is. 
So let's look at equation for M1. Right? For M1, what do we have? We have F minus C equals to M1A. Well, think about it. C is the only unknown in this equation. So let's do a little bit of algebra to get it by itself. That means that C is equal to F minus M1A. We can substitute our values in right away. So we have 18 newtons for my applied force. Uh, the mass M1 is one kilogram and multiplied by three for the acceleration. And we're gonna get 18 minus three, which gives me 50 newtons. Okay, that's the contact force uh, acting on the blocks. What if I used equation two instead, right? Because equation two, well, let's try it. The equation for block M2 is that the contact force minus my force of friction uh, equals to M2A this time. So if I wanna get it by itself, do a little bit of algebra, force of friction plus M2A. All right, we substitute the numbers now. The force of friction I solved in the first part, I got nine newtons. And plus, now we need to add this other term, uh, which is two for the mass, and the acceleration of the system was three. So we get nine plus, uh, this gives me six. Oh, look at that, we get 50 newtons. It doesn't matter which equation you use, we are going to get the same value, okay? So that's kind of the nice thing about having all of these equations. You can automatically see uh, just quickly where the variable appears and how you're going to solve uh, to get what you want. All right, folks, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. All right, until next time. Go.